morning. This is Miss Nita and Miss Panda with the Timepiece Garden. Since she's been outside to do her first morning walk. And, uh, hey, it's a cool, crisp 43 degrees outside. One of those fun things about that is the house is much warmer. See, it's, it's 64 degrees here inside the house. So the house always stays 20 degrees warmer than outside. Um, it's my first, I don't know, I'm going to say truly cold fall morning. Um, you can say I got the fireplace going because it's not, how do I say it, it's not going to be cold enough to turn the heat on. Um, I won't lie, it's 64 degrees, I sleep well. You know, get up in the blankets and in the quilt and just curl up and I'm out. I'm out for the evening. Um, but the house is chilly when you wake up. You know, so I do a little fire in the morning, warm up the house. By the time the sun comes up, because the sun's not even cracked through the window yet. You know, you can see some light through the trees, but it's still relatively dark. But by the time that the sun actually comes up, we're supposed to get in the 70s today. So <clears throat> you don't want to turn the heat on, but you want to get the chill off the house in the morning. So a little fire makes for an awesome morning. All right. Miss Panda and I are playing with her toys already. Well, we will talk at you later. So the sun is up. It's shining. It is still a cool 43 degrees. Um, but I do like it when the light filters through the, the leaves this way and just kind of just kind of shines on the mist a little. Now, you know me. I don't like 43 degrees. I'm not going to be out here very long. But Panda wanted to come out, and she's uh, checking out something on the hill. Had to bark at it. And yeah, red truck. Jeep is sick. Had a friend letting me borrow the truck because then, um, and uh, I'm going to turn this way. Panda's going to do some business. Um, within an hour's drive from me in any direction, um, even up into Missouri, um, it'll be next week. We're talking seven to nine days before anybody has a rental car available. So, but the Jeep is sick. It had to go to the shop, so our friend loaded me, loaned me their truck. All right, there's Miss Panda. <laughs> She's all better now. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, nice little red vehicle instead of a blue one. Sunlight shining through the mist. I always like it when it does that. You know? And with that, I'm going in the house. It's chilly. So y'all have an awesome day. And I will talk to you later. Afternoon. Alright, we finally warmed up to a nice warm... 66 degrees, which is awesome. It's perfect work weather. Um, and this is why I come out here and do the grass on the driveway. Um, like you can see it a little. There's a, I'm going to tell you a ravine right here. And you can see where the last two days of rain have pushed the grass so it all goes. There's my finger. There it is. So it all goes down this way because that's where the ravine runs. And there it is. It's a little clearer. And it runs on down that way. Now it ends up going down the hill and then over to the farmer's pond over there and you know that's where the water goes. Um, come fall when all the leaves fall all this grass will catch all the leaves and it'll clog this up. Um, and then the water starts running down the road. And that's not what we want. So this just happens to be a really good video to show that you know. Again you can see the you can see where it's our, where it laid the grass down the last two days. You know. So, anyway, let me get in here and get to work. Continue working on the road because this is, you know, cut back, cut that, blah, cut back the grass. Um, left and right side. I've, I've got to go farther up the hill. I'm going to start back there where I left off and then come down this way. Um, I should get all of this grass area done today. Um, no problems, and then that means Tuesday will be the earliest, and I can start working on cutting all the scrub back from the right side of the road. All the tree branches and the scrub, all the stuff that's, that's you know, should be three foot off the road, and it's not. So, but today is grass. You know? So, anyway, talk to you in a few. 
All right, I'm done with trimming for today. You can see by the, where's my finger? There it is, you can see the ravine. I mean, all the way down. Get my finger out the way so it wasn't focusing on the finger. Focus on the finger, but you can see it. Kind of all the way down over there. It's all ravine, it's open, it's clear. All the, you know, long grass is gone. So should it rain in the next couple of days or weeks or whatever, you know, the water will go down the ravine and not down the road. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna have to, I believe, I'm gonna have to come up here at the backhoe and maybe dig out some areas. Um, it's either the backhoe or the pick and the shovel, and I think the backhoe will be so much easier. Um, having said that, I trimmed a little, again on the right, not a lot, because most of this is scrub, like this is all blackberry bramble right here. Um, the DR won't do that. Um, so that's pruning shears and, and like the, the tree there, the sapling, that's... That's my pole saw, and just start clearing all of this three foot off the road back. And part of the reason is, especially that, I don't know, juniper, whatever you want to call it, cedar, whatever, um, the telephone pole is there. Does that make sense? And I know this sounds crazy, but it's a choke point for me. You know, the telephone pole's there. You can see the ravine on the right side. I got nowhere to go should this portion of the road flood out. So I'm thinking that when I come and do the uh, backhoe, I'm actually going to move this, I don't know, two or three feet off the road there. You know, take it over towards the fence because you can see that. Where's my finger? There you go. The ravine's there, but the fence is all the way over here. You can see the T-post. And just, you know, redig it some. Now, it's not going to make a difference down here because down there the fence is up against the road. I'm not going to be able to move it over any farther. Um, but right here at the power pole because I can't go any farther left. Um... And then likewise, I'd, if the power pole was down, I'd like it not to fall on these cedars here on the corner. So, I don't know. Lots to do. But, you know, I, the grass is down, which is a good thing. I can see where the ravine is. You figure I can, I can drive on the grass strips. There you go, here and here. Not even have to drive on the road at all. <laughs> all right. Lots to do still, but I'm done for today. I'll talk to you later.